Hello everyone, so today we're going to be starting on an actual project. It will last one video because I don't want to make like three five minute videos just for one thing, so this might be a bit long, but you guys will actually get something out of the end of it. So we're actually going to completely erase everything so I can explain what's going on here. Now, I never explained the include directive but we will get to that later on so that part I'm not going to explain everything else though we got this so below we're going to do two more lines and we're going to actually create our main function we're going to say int main in parentheses void which just means which just means excuse me that we're making a main function which takes no parameters and returns an integer when it's done processing the information then we're going to make a new line and start our actual function body. And in here we're going to actually create a constant with the define directive. So we're going to say pound define and then pi. And we'll say 3.141592. Just so we have something really accurate. Now what this does is just say, okay, we're going to define a variable which will stay the same and cannot ch be changed. Call it pi and assign it this value. Remember with the define directive we don't have to say what type this is. We don't have to say that it's an integer. We don't have to say it's float. We don't have to say it's a character. We just put in the value which we could do there. Now our line below that we're going to actually want to create our own variable. And this one we're going to set equal to a float because we don't need a huge amount of information to hold this so we're not going to use a double but we're going to say float r and then semicolon below that we're going to want to say scan f and we're going to actually scan for user input into the float variable that we created r so quotation percent sign or modulus and then we can do F again we're going to use the ampersand because of pointers which again we'll go over later and we're going to say R so that we know to assign whatever value they give us into the R variable and actually above scan F in between uh, float R we're going to want to print F and say enter the radius here colon space and then quotation and that with a semicolon there we go and then also end the scanf line with a semicolon now below that we're going to want to put in print f again and say this is the area or we'll say the area of the circle is percent and then F. Then quotation comma and basically this will be so that we can actually calculate the radius of the circle and then put that back into the string and print out what the area of the circle is based on the radius that they gave us and using the constant of pi that we defined in the beginning. So if you've been in geometry or anything like that, I'm assuming you guys have been at least in algebra. If you haven't, well, you guys will learn something before you take the class. Yay. You'd have to be pretty young not to have taken algebra, though. Anyways, so in here, we're going to say parentheses and then r times r and then times pi put that in parentheses just for good measurement of making sure orders of operations doesn't screw up on us so pi times r squared good we could also just actually so the formula stays the same I'm just going to put pi times r times r there we go that looks good and now we're going to end that with a semicolon save it and if we run this we should actually get the area of a circle so let's start with something simple we'll just compile run this 
So far there's no errors. For the radius, let's just put in one. The area of the circle is, oh, something I forgot to do. I've been forgetting to do this lately. Make sure at the end of your main, after print the last printf, you type in return zero. The reason for this is so that it returns an integer value like we told it to, and so that the program will return zero, which is the default value for an exit code, which means that it exited normally and that there were no problems that it encountered. So now if we compile and run it, put in one, we get 3.141592, which by math tells us that it's working fine because one times one is one times pi is pi. So everything's been, everything worked fine. If we wanted to, we could run this again. Oops. I, let's just say that that was the right one. Um, and we'll put in four for the radius and we get another answer. And I'm going to assume that's correct because the other one was as well. So that is a simple little project calculator that we made. Now later on when we get into if statements and things like that, arrays, we're going to end up with some really cool looking programs and they're going to be much longer than this for sure. If we wanted to though, just to you know make sure that we did everything that I taught you before, we can actually make another function do the computation for us, which would be pretty interesting. So let's actually do that. Up here, let's, or no, let's just put this below main. Okay, we're going to say float and then area, and we'll say float r, go in here, and we can actually get rid of the define pi up here actually. And then down here when we start our body we'll actually make the define here. So define pi 3.141592. Alright, and then we can say return and then in parentheses r times r times oops, times pi in case that entire statement in parentheses and now instead of actually doing the computation up here we can go in and just say area and then r if we save compile and run oops oh let's put that in there Everything should run. Nope. One second. Oh, okay. Up here, this is actually something I was trying to show you guys in the function video. Um, sometimes you'll get errors if you don't do something like that. There we go. And hold on. The reason for that is that it actually tells us what the syntax of the function is here. We could actually just take this entire function, declare it up here, and everything would work, or at least it should. Um, we can actually test that right now because I'm interested to make sure that I gave you guys the right information. Yeah, okay, so that would work too. And in most of my code, I actually do always define functions other than main beforehand. That way I don't have to go through that problem. But always make sure if you do put the function in after main that you put the actual syntax of it. So like this definition part before main. That way everything works fine. Anyway, so let's compile, run, and then say radius 4. And we get the same answer as we did before. Process exited normally and everything worked fine. So that is everything we've learned so far in one program. Um, hopefully I explained everything to you guys thoroughly, everything that we've gone over at least. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, press the like button. If you really liked it, press favorite because that helps a lot. Watch the video as many times as you would like because views always help. And subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this. And I will be seeing you later.